Hey guys, welcome to the new episode of Automated Seller Podcast. Today I have a special guest, Vincenzo Toscano. Uh, hi, Vincenzo. How are you? Good, bro. Everything good. Thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure. Sure, sure, sure. So yeah, me and Vincenzo actually met, I think, in Israel for the first time. Then uh, we've right. seen each other also in uh, Lithuania. Vincenzo is actually a um, founder of uh, Ecomsi, the Amazon uh, agency, and also yeah. he's a big um person in the industry i would say like a leader like he's uh everywhere you can uh, <laughs> see him actually on a on a stage uh, i actually listened yeah. to your speech in lithuania it was really awesome i would love to talk a little bit about um this topic that you mentioned so basically ai uh, in yeah. this podcast as well um but before we start before we jump to actual questions i would love to hear a little bit about your story vincenzo like how yeah. Uh, did you actually start with the Amazon? Um, what did you do before? Yeah, of course. It's a pleasure. Uh, so basically, my background is uh, engineering. And actually, I'm going to go a little bit even further down the line. So I was born in Italy, in Naples. And, and from there, basically, my, my family wanted to do a business. And that's why they took the decision when I was four to move to Venezuela. We mm -hmm. moved to Venezuela. I grew up there. I lived there around 15 years. From there, I then started jumping around because we all know that Venezuela then became basically a very difficult country to live in. Mm -hmm. And from there, I, I tried the Canada, the USA, and finally uh, ended up in the UK. So I've been in the UK for around 10 years now. And the reason why I moved to the UK is because I was looking for basically a nice, uh, you know, university for the major I wanted to focus on initially, which was actually aerospace engineering. That's my background. And... Uh, it's funny because every single time I say that, people say, oh, how you went from being pretty much a, ro a rocket scientist to selling on Amazon? But yes, yeah. it, it all started because, um, you know, I started working as an engineer and I used to work for Rolls-Royce, uh, which for those that might not know, actually, the, the biggest actually uh, division is w one of the biggest ones is the, um, the turbine engine uh, division. And when I used to work on that division for airplanes. So it's, it's now, not cars, it's actually, <coughs> yeah, the, the planes, because usually yeah. people think uh, that Rolls Royce is just about cars. And uh, actually, yeah. I think uh, w one day I was also shocked that actually, if I, if, when I realized that they produce those huge, those engines to planes or how should I? Yeah, so they, so they do the turbines for engines, they do submarines, mm -hmm. nuclear energy they do a lot of things beside car actually the car side of Rolls Royce is more like a private level project in the sense that they license their their name to BMW but BMW is one of the main manufacturers of the cars so mm -hmm. they don't actually manufacture the cars the car themselves but yeah going back to them to to my background yes i started working there as an engineer and basically you know i always had that a uh, image of my life of also seeing some of family members having their own business and that's how i started thinking how can i actually build something on the side while um you know working as an engineer and then basically by researching online that's how i found that amazon fba and from there, I started selling online. I started using my engineering, basically, uh, income to found my launching products, inventory, marketing, and all of that. So I remember there was some period that all the money was taken was going into the business. So it was very <laughs> cash flow, actually efficient because it wasn't an actual expense. It was just the money was getting from the salary was going towards the business. And what did you I'm, sell? So I was selling initially sports related products, but then from there, I started jumping and creating our brands in the kitchen space. A baby, I mean, so many things have a soul in the in, in the space, and, and from there I started uh, branching out to um, doing also the same with partners, so finding partners in the space that they wanted to sell. And on top of that, I also uh, found uh, basically the gap in the market, as I always say, by going to uh, events like, oh, you actually can make awesome money not only being a seller, but actually also supporting Amazon sellers. I found that a lot of people have. Great products, great brands, great ideas, but they didn't really know how to execute. They didn't have the knowledge or the time. And that's where I thought, okay, maybe, uh, you know, as in the engineering space, there is all these subcontractors that Rolls Royce hire for doing a lot of processes. I could build the same for Amazon sellers. Amazon sellers will need contractors to run their business. And that's how the agency idea came to my, uh, to my mind. And I found that it comes in. And basically, we specialize on doing the full operation of these brands on Amazon. And two, actually, three months ago, we also added Walmart. So we're actually one of the awesome. only 20 agencies right now that is officially recognized and approved by oh, Walmart. Oh, really? There, yeah, there's only the, 20 uh, in the world. agencies? In the wow. world, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
uh, I think I did them. the podcast also with two two of them probably because I, I did really? one with the seller card with David and then I did with the Blue Rise yeah, they... Ryan King. So I don't know if they are I think yeah. they are both yeah. there. So yeah, also you the third yeah. one. Nice. So we are we are we are a very small club uh, and, and and that actually shows you that you know the the commitment that Walmart is doing to actually be very diligent to 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 basically select the right partners and what we're doing with Walmart as well now supporting some of our Amazon brands to bring them into, mm-hmm. into Walmart. Um, that's awesome. So, so that's um, the agency and and been doing that for over three years now. Uh, and, and the last project I also have uh, on the cooking now and grown is a software side of things as well. So I also release a, a, a software called MZ Ambassador. And, and the idea behind this tool is basically to be able to connect brands with Amazon Live creators. So Amazon Live is very early stages, but I believe that the future of e-commerce is live streams. And basically with this software, what we want to be is like the go-to tool for Amazon sellers to basically find the right ambassadors to basically mm-hmm. live streams their products. Um, that's it. So yes. Yeah, what do you mean li- live stream? C- could you tell me a little bit more about the service? Because I don't know if I yeah. know it. So yeah. So this Amazon Live is actually very interesting. If you go right now and, and Google Amazon Live, it's basically like a QVC in the States that's very famous, like this TV channel that mm-hmm. feature pros and you can buy by calling and all of that. Or even Twitch, like gaming and live streaming, yeah. but within Amazon. So basically what happens, oh, wow. these are influencers that they have a following. They will click the go live button, they go live. And in this live, they can talk about your pro. They can talk about yeah. oh, how nice these glasses are, how nice this watch, etc. And then under the live stream, you can embed the links that go directly to the listing on Amazon. And on top of that, you can put a custom coupons to redeem while only watching the stream. So, and, it's very and basically it's a, it's an interaction because maybe you want to buy a product, but you want to ask a specific question about the material or the feature, you have now that option on the live stream to ask the influencer. And if you the influencer convince you, then you click and, and you make the purchase. And the nice thing is that first you remove the barrier of, you know, the fact that when you shop online, you can really feel a product, really understand the product in depth. So this influencer is basically a customer service in, yeah, in live. Yeah, you can ask, yeah. ask the questions yeah. right away. It, it kind of reminds me of those, uh, because I know that one of the most popular videos on YouTube are unboxing videos, right? So mm-hmm. when you buy a product, you want to exactly. first uh, watch the unbox video. And this is something that you can watch it live. You can ask the question. I actually love yeah. it. And it reminds me of those old TV. I, I think like they are still going in, in TV where you have those uh, <laughs> salesmen show showing the products. But this is just like TV and it's like, yeah, yeah call me here to order it. But I didn't know, actually. This is something super nice. I will have to take a look at that. I know, I'm, I know that... Amazon um, acquired Twitch, right? Which is the streaming yeah. platform, but this That's is for right. gaming. Yeah. But so this I one think... is a different, mm-hmm. yeah. This they is different, but shopping. I know that they are one of the most popular category right now is those like just uh, live talks. It's, it's yeah. not really about gaming. Like people go in the cities, they stream some yeah. stuff. Like it's a like... vlog. Like a like a yeah like, like a vlog about about the products. Uh, that's very interesting that they they launched the extra service for this, and I think it's very interesting because yeah, uh, I mean people trust people. So when someone sees the product live, obviously it will um, have the huge impact for the buyer, like for the yeah. decision. So yeah, that's that's really it, nice. It's very interesting, and that's why I think it's going to be the future mainly because. Usually China is like five years down the line compared to, to us when it comes to e-commerce and technology. And in, if you go right now to any um, a e-commerce platform in, in Asia, the only thing you're going to see is video, live stream mm-hmm. video, video, video. You don't even see products like in Amazon. And I see Amazon pushing more and more video. And I think it's going to be a matter of time before the actually competitive advantage to have the right, the best influences or be live streaming 24 seven, like basically a, a TV channel and have their base interaction to convince those people to buy yours in terms of the competition. So, yeah. That's great. That's great. I'll, I'll make sure to put also link like in the, in the description <laughs> if people want to check it out. So that, that's sure. great. And I, I really want to actually, when you were engineer, um, you were probably just like it was more like robotics engineer, so we are constructing stuff. Or actually, did you learn to code as well? Yeah. So basically, um, when it comes to my background and um, in terms of what I was doing, I was in charge of the computer unit um, of the engine. So, um, and basically, what I was in charge is making sure 
all the control system was working as it should. And basically the control system of, a, of an airplane, which basically, if most people don't know, they most, most of the airplanes actually are always driving in autopilot. The pilot nowadays, the only thing they do is actually landing and taking yeah. off. The rest is done by the computer. So basically what this computer does is that you need to feed all the information from the sensors, from the, from the cockpit, from the fuselage, from the, the wings, everything. Put all the information, make certain calculations. And if you want to increase the speed, you do certain changes to the engine, that kind of stuff. So that I was basically the person behind doing some of that control system in the back end. Mm -hmm. I really like the transition and I wonder if you actually had this, I don't know how to name it. Um, like I called it in my case, a little bit of crisis of finding myself in a, in a world <laughs> because I'm a coder from, from, from the background. And if, even if you go to like my YouTube channel, I have a coding tutorials. I, mm -hmm. I only knew how to make money by coding. And then when I started Delta Logic, first I was freelancer. So still I was yeah. like coding myself. Then I had some contractors, some full-time employees, but I was still coding and since i think one year since uh, our new cto i completely stepped up stepped out from coding i'm not mm -hmm. touching projects i'm not talking to the clients uh, during the project phase and uh, I, i'm not gonna lie i mean at some point i kind of had this thought like okay i'm entrepreneurial but um it means i have to still learn new things always yeah. learn like i need to do sales marketing and everything but on the other hand my whole expertise now is kind of useless, right? And I really wonder how did it feel for you when you, you know, <laughs> you are a professional engineer and then suddenly you started uh, selling on Amazon and started um, helping others to sell on Amazon. Yeah, of course. I mean, there's always that judgment you you do to yourself about, yeah, I studied all these years and, <laughs> and now I'm <laughs> for what? I'm not doing that anymore. Uh, but I think it's part of the journey, you know, I feel like life is very short to actually be afraid to find new things. And, and that's why actually I feel most people is not happy because they think that because they chose one decision when they were young or the university, that's the only decision now they can pursue in life and they close their mind to only doing that for the rest of their lives. And I think it's, uh, you know, it's, you just need to be open-minded that even if you did a degree, a PhD, or whatever, you spend all this time on one thing. Maybe next day you discover that you like, I don't know, you like you like painting and now you're going to be an artist and that's fine. If that makes you happy, why not pursue that? I mean, what, what's the point of living your life about thinking about what if rather than doing it? And then maybe you do the painting and you realize the painting wasn't the thing, but maybe you do it and you become a Picasso. So you see right. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so totally. it's, about, I... it's about trying and trying error. Exactly. This is how I felt actually, because I'm, I feel like naturally I, I have, let's say, some talent to for marketing, even though I've never learned any marketing, yeah. I just feel how to do it. Right. It's and then I nature, feel like yeah. I, if I pick yeah. different university, maybe I'll become much yeah. better in, in doing it, but you never know. So there's no right and wrong. And I really like your poster, which says mindset <laughs> is everything. <laughs> it actually, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's all about that. I think, uh, and if you see, it's all about, even if you are the little fish and you're trying to figure out, you just need to always put the face forward that you're the shark and you're going for it because I think uh, yeah, what you think is what you make reality. And if you don't see yourself as a shark, then you're never going to really become the shark. So that that's it. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Now, I also wanted to ask you one question regarding be becoming um, like, let's say, a speaker um, leader yeah. in the industry like Amazon community. How did it start for you? How, how did you actually, how, how come that you are now a speaker on almost every conference? <laughs> So, I mean, it's funny because by nature, I would consider myself as an introvert. So speaking was always my, my biggest fear. And this goes back to trying new things. I always thought that speaking would never be my thing. And for some reason, I give it a try and I discovered I actually like it. And it started just by, you know, trying it, to be honest. I actually been speaking. My first like real speak speech was on October last year. So it was less than a year. And in less mm -hmm. than a year now, I'm being on. 20 plus conferences already oh, wow. speaking. So for some reason it's skyrocketed very easily, which at the same time I prefer for the mere fact that if I only had done, let's say one conference and then I stop and then need to retake in one year, maybe I will have lost the practice and the confidence mm -hmm. that, that builds. But because I was forced to do it and I was put <laughs> in a very uncomfortable uh, environment, which I think that's the best way to actually pivot and learn. I had to figure out, regardless of me not understanding how to be a speaker, I just had to figure out. And then by trial and error and doing, of course, some 
stupid mistakes that I'm sure I did while speaking or things like that, which is normal. You just then become more confident, more confident until it reaches a point that then you just become second nature so totally I mean, no i can yeah. tell that, that after from from your last speech i was like wow this guy knows what he's talking about like it was very <laughs> professional and i really enjoy it especially that you were talking about new things ai and actually i wanted to definitely jump into this topic especially yeah. talking about your services i mean yeah. industry changes um now when you're using ai you can do things 10 times faster than your competitors. So I would love to hear first about your um, services at Ecomsi yep. that you offer um, to Amazon sellers. And then how do you leverage AI to become faster than the competitors? Because you certainly do it a lot. I saw it on the <laughs> presentation and I even took a lot of notes. I checked some yeah. plugins for ChatGPT. So yeah, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, so just to give a quick summary about it comes in the services and then we jump into the AI. Yeah, it comes in it comes in what we do is basically we do full account management. So we specialize into a scaling brands on Amazon or Walmart. So that means this is usually the perfect fit for companies that they have Amazon as a channel and they don't really or Walmart and they don't really have the expertise of the time to really bring it to the next level. And that's where my team basically attached to your business just as a new business unit and does everything from you from, you know, the listings all the way to strategy advertisement and so on. Now, when it comes to AI, the nice thing is that we've been able to actually leverage that to the fast growth the agency has been having because at the same time, when you grow in an agency, one of the bottlenecks you have not encountered is people within the team because you finding clients is easy and converting them. The issue is like, are you actually delivering and keep delivering with actually needing to hire more people and so on. And because of that, we were forced to find alternatives. And that's how AI has been a big thing of, of our processes. Like when I talk about uh, things that we do with AI, for example, it's a big part of our, how we do the listings and the copy for our clients, how we do market research for our clients, how we even do reporting, uh, automated reports, combining with Sapier and other things for our clients. How we use AI, for example, for even images. So image is something that is always a bottleneck when in commerce because you need to talk to the designer, you need to get yeah. the concept of the branding from the brand owner, you need to combine them and potentially do an image, revise it, blah, 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 and all that. Now with AI, it's very straightforward. Like we can do images for a product in a matter of one hour or less. And then we have our tools to the infographics. So in less than 24 hours, we can get a listing up and running. Uh, which before wasn't the case because the image had to be done from the scratch. And, not, and sometimes not even the image in terms of design. We had to hire a photographer, a stage to do the images and everything. And as you could see from my presentation, now with Mid Journey, you can make images that they look real, but they don't exist. It's real people, yeah. real environments. So but yeah, I know exist. that I, I know that you are using Mid Journey um, to, to, to this plugin to like create those images, but then you are also combining them with some background photos. And now I wonder, like, is it the case that you fully do artificial um, images for listings, or you first maybe take a photo and then like edit it using some additional AI? Yeah. So, for example, the issue that at the moment we're having with AI is that you cannot embed images to that image, so AI does it. So what I mean is, let's say you have a, a product, right, like a, a bottle, a supplement bottle, and you want that specific person to be holding the bottle, you cannot give the image to the AI, so it does, and then combine the two things together. So it's, it's not working efficiently at the moment. So what we're doing is we create the, the main skeleton, like the person on the beach having something holding in the hand, and then the graphic designer, the only thing has to do is change that generic object by the actual product. And it looks super real. It's very difficult to really realize that is Photoshop because the actual image was generated from the ground up like a, with the configuration of a camera, as you could see from the plugins we're using. So that's, it, it, it creates, basically it's like having a 24 seven photographer working for you. Yeah. Like I need an image of a person uh, sitting on the beach and with a table next to it, right? Uh, the AI creates the image, we want, it looks real, a real shot. And the nice thing is this shot has never been generated before, so it's unique. And then the copywriter comes and, and do the Photoshop uh, effect with the shadow and it to put the product on the table next to the person. And where a person sees that, you may think that you actually went to the beach and did the whole <laughs> shooting, but no. Right. So yeah, that's also that's that's an, awesome. an example. Yeah. Do you actually notice now like a peak on, on Amazon, like regarding like pro overall products that there's more and more artificial photos of products? 
um, the thing is with this, it, it has a learning curve. So not a lot of people really know how to do probably because you can also do a lot of images we are, but they are crappy. So you need, you need to understand how to filter the whole thing and make it properly. Uh, what I have seen in some categories is that, that yes, the bar of entry in terms of nice images is increasing. That means more people know what they're doing with, with graphic design. Uh, but I would say that there's still a big uh, gap. Like in, I would say where I see the most gap is in Europe, to be honest, in USA, because you know, USA is always hustle 24 seven. They are already trying to catch up. But in Europe, I have clients that they are dominating because they have the best images, everything. And it's just because people in Europe, they still, maybe they don't know about AI or they don't really know how to automate the process. They're still using traditional photography. And now we can release new videos every day, new banners for sponsor brands, a new a, a, a plus content. So we can basically disrupt specific niches mm-hmm. very easily because of it. I know. Yeah. That's nice. And do, do you actually encounter some clients who, be, because you're using those services to enhance um, all of your work, make it faster, better? Like, but I mean, obviously this is the case. I and mean, we also leverage the AI, but I, I, I've, um, I know I've met some people who are actually um, say thinking the other way around. They say, "Hey, yeah. I don't want AI generated picture. I don't want AI yeah. generated content. Yeah. I don't want AI um, translated content to other marketplace." So I wonder what are your thoughts and how transparent are you also with your clients? Yeah, we are always transparent that the images are, are done by AI. In fact, sometimes. How we have done when people say, you know, I think AI is not going to make the image look real and everything. Once we, just for the mere fact of, I, I think we're going to release like a case study about that. We did a real image with a real photographer and we did the image with AI. And then we just gave it two images and just asking which one you prefer. They're both real. We didn't say one was with AI. And he ended up choosing the one with AI. And then, we said, oh, you know what? You're actually choosing the one we're doing with AI. And, and that was a clear example of how. You know, AI can be so powerful. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. Um, now, also, um, I wanted to discuss a little bit the other parts, so not or the or, not the, exactly the organic one, uh, rather than that the advertisement side. Um, so you also offer running ads for your clients. Could you speak right. a little bit about those services? Yeah, when it comes to advertisement, uh, yeah, that's one of the main things that, of course, we focus on because that's what dra- drives the most of the results on, on, on an account. Um, and lately, as, as I was super sending, we also been using AI for that on, on a very clever way. And what I mean by this is like now, for example, we can download reports from Amazon and we can uh, tell to chat GPT, for ex- please let me know what type of targeting is working most efficiently, break down what are the specific uh, keywords I need to focus on. And, and now in a matter of seconds, you know what to do with the PPC. And on top of that, we actually now been playing uh, as well with, for example, from Amazon, you can download a full uh, bulk file from all your campaigns and you can tell to the AI, please analyze all my campaigns. If you see a keyword that has this amount of clicks and of sales, do this to the bit. If you see a keyword that has this amount of conversion and this KPI, do this. And basically, you can optimize your whole campaigns by just boom, boom, boom. Up, so, so you are pack. saying like you are working with the AI assistance kind of like your, like your data analysis, like you're feeling... Yeah. You're feeding it with actual data from Amazon, and, and then asking... I give the the, par- the parameters they I will follow to make sure my campaigns are optimized. Yeah, that's awesome. I actually never encounter um, anyone in a podcast yet um, doing it this way, which is brilliant because I've also analyzed some data um, with the AI. Obviously, uh, yeah. we we did that also with like our emails with our yeah. projects. We asked it for say, hey, which uh, projects are um, worth doing. Giving those uh, parameters, uh, so this is this is great actually. Yeah. Um, I didn't know it would work that good for the Amazon. Um, yeah. of course, it, it, I wouldn't say it's hundred percent fully to me because still we then check it out and do some extra yeah. manual work. And you need to be the expert. You need to understand actually what to ask, yeah. how to ask, and how to read it. So yeah, exactly. But it can automate a lot of work, right? And you having to do it manually on Excel with macros and all of that. Mm-hmm. So so, yeah, so that... what AI you, do, do you use for this? Is it ChatGPT or some different? So, yeah, with ChatGPT itself, you you can you have the code interpreter new uh, tool you can upload an excel file and then it can throw an excel file back to you and then that's it that's awesome <laughs> um 
So, I, I really have to check check it out actually. Yeah, uh, just and to I play think, around. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure you also saw the other thing we're doing with agencies. Uh, we created our own AI as well. So, uh, like that's your some... your own AI, um, let's say assistant that understands all of your company wiki, like all of your knowledge. Yeah. So or... what we did is we uploaded a, a connected some of the sales emails, SOPs, a projects, a case studies resources, blogs, uh, even podcasts, scripts, mm -hmm. everything. And now basically it's like a 24 seven hub for any, any team member that has a question like, oh, I'm having this issue with this, um, I don't know, this brand that is performing this badly. And, and I tried this and this, can you recommend another pattern then because it has access to all our SAPs and everything. Uh, of course, you need to iterate sometimes to get the right answer, but it's, it's, it's self-learning AI, so basically it becomes better and better. And it's like having my own chat GBD, but not open to the web. It's just uh, for internal process, uh, and it's very but good is, because... So your employees use it, basically. Yeah, my employers, yeah. Because, for example, something that was always a bottleneck as well is like, sometimes my managers have specific things that need my approval or, or questions and everything. Uh, or they didn't know anything uh, about a specific thing. And now that right at me waiting for me to wake up or answer, they could just ask the AI. And the AI, based on my past behaviors, analyzing my emails, things and all of mm -hmm. that, uh, can answer for me. <laughs> That's awesome. I just hired full-time uh, executive <laughs> assistant. If I knew, <laughs> this could be different. <laughs> um, but no. I, I really like it. Um, and I would love to also ask you for some case study, actually, for a, um, like a custom uh, success story, Yeah, if you could share with us. Yeah, of course. So I think one of the the, the biggest uh, case studies that we have in terms of a small brand making it big was one of these supplement brands that came to us and they purchased during um, the COVID time. So it was during the bubble of the aggregators and all of that. And they actually overpay for the brand. So they were actually struggling because they, they were paying the peak of COVID and they came to us sales were down compared to last year. So they really need to pick up to make back their money. And we basically come in, this brand was doing between 500, 600 thousands per year. So not very big brand, but after doing all the changes in terms of making all the listings and images, a, a plus content, PPC campaigns, expanding to Europe as well. A, so that was a, a US client or where, where did it go? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with now a span of around 15 months, we went from that to now close to 4 million in, in year. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> super nice. Yeah. And of course they had to take funding and everything, of course. But the point is that they were doing so many things wrong in terms of everything, images, listing, PPC. It actually was good for us because we could actually add so much value. You know, sometimes you have clients that they are doing everything so well that it's difficult to add value. <laughs> but for this one, it's like, yeah, they were doing so many things wrong that we came in and, and just by doing all these things, now we completely changed the business and they could exit now and make their money back and even more. So this is a, a very clear example of how when you tap all the areas, which is another benefit of working with us. Most of the agencies that they might do only advertisement, they're very good in advertisement, but they might not know how to optimize maybe your images as well or your copy, or how to actually be very clever and efficient with your cash flow or inventory management. And, and we actually can come in and help you with everything, not only PPC, and even help you expand, which is one of the main things we do, like other markets and things like that. That's awesome. That's that's a really great case study. If you scale it like 4x, right? From 500 mm -hmm. to... No, even more, 8x, right? To 4 yeah, mil. Crazy. So yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that's, that's just crazy. Um, and did you notice uh, like a trend maybe that since you are the European agency that you have more clients coming from US to expand to uh, EU or the other way around, or it's just not trend at all. I, I just wonder if there's some correlation yeah. between. So actually one of the biggest trends is actually a US to Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, but lately, because we are going to assist uh, a lot of events and everything in Europe, we're actually getting a lot of attraction from European brands and business that want to come to actually USA. So now we're working with a lot of European brands that they have very good product in the sense that things are working very well, just as a tip. It's product made in Europe that uh, is not a typical product made in China. It's like product made in Germany or product made in Italy or France, something that shows the European her uh, history or maybe culture mm -hmm. and everything. And we're bringing that to USA and it's been working very well. Yeah. 
And then you can also scale it to Walmart, right? Because as far exactly. as I know, Walmart only exists in uh, US and Canada, maybe. Well, yes, I'm not Canada even sure. And, and, and Chile as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, and, uh, yeah. is this something that you also at some point suggest to your clients that, hey, actually, okay, we scaled pretty well here. Now we see this opportunity to get you on Walmart as well, or those are just separate clients just for Walmart's sake? What's the strategy there? So actually, yeah, actually we try to first put all the efforts on, on the things that are going to give you the, the most value, which is usually scaling your, your Amazon a channel. If that's the one you already have. Once we have seen that we already reached a stable um, a level, that's when we go and, and propose doing Walmart because usually Walmart can be a nice way for you to diversify and then uh, add that extra uh, risk uh, tolerance to your business because the more channels you have, that means you rely less on one single channel. And usually if you find the right product and you enter a Walmart now, it's a good opportunity because um, it's a, it's the early move advantage, right? Not a lot of people are doing Walmart now. A lot of a lot of the pros have not not even hundred reviews, fifty reviews. So it's very easy for you to start a, building a reputation on those niches. And the CPC, which is the cost per click, we had a client that he was paying four dollars in the USA. We brought it to Walmart. He's paying sixty to seventy cents. Oh wow! So, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's crazy so it's a huge difference. So that's why. Maybe, yeah, of course, you're not going to make the same revenue as Amazon. But for example, this client, he, he was making, I don't remember how much he was making, but let's say he was making 100K in revenue in, in, in Amazon, right? Even if he comes to Walmart, he makes only 20,000, 25,000, just by the reduction in cost per click. He might he, end up with the same the profit. profit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? So, and also, I've, I think Walmart is something that everyone just should, monitor at the moment uh yeah. I, I, after doing those podcasts also asking people around everyone says that hey walmart is like amazon in 2017 however <laughs> it moves much faster because people know amazon already so mm -hmm. um it, it will get to the amazon much faster so yeah um th that's great that you also offer it as a service i think like it, it, it's great so great also the, 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 the Ah, you have to diversificate your services and yeah, yeah, diversification is king. I mean, it's all about that because if if you only rely on on one market, which I have seen a lot of people doing, then you might end up with the surprise that you know if your account gets shut down or over a lot of saturation, then you have nowhere to run, uh, you know, and you want to avoid totally. that long term. Yeah. Walmart is also something that we are looking into regarding our uh, services for custom software tools. Um, mm -hmm. We I'm pretty sure there's a lot of opportunity there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, there's not many tools, right? Yet. So and people have more and more ideas. So th that's yeah. something that we definitely are also monitoring. Uh, I know that getting the API access is something uh, much yeah, harder than and Amazon, yeah. therefore we haven't really put any content out there, but this is also on our roadmap. So mm, awesome. we, we may get there sure. as well. Yeah, I mean, it's a blue ocean. There's not a lot of tools and, and the tools that are out there are very limited. So I think whoever gets access to that API and start just replicating the same tools that have to see in Amazon and Walmart, uh, you know, I'm going to make a ton of money long term. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, <laughs> Vincenzo, it was great to have you here. Actually, thanks a lot for, for coming. And uh, could you tell uh, our listeners where people can find EcomC, where, where people can find you? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so you can find me as Vincenzo Toscani in all the social media channels. And, and also, I'm very active most of the time in LinkedIn. And when it comes to the agency, comes here as well. If you type a see you can find us. Uh, more than happy to, you know, provide value to you. Uh, maybe schedule a call, explore how we can add value to you. And and that's it, yeah. In that's fact, awesome. if you reach out to my website, just to make this note as well, there is... And uh, an opportunity now to have uh, like a free consultation with the team. So, you know, we can do that and explore that. Awesome. I'll make sure to put everything uh, in, mm -hmm. in the description. So it's ecomc.com. By the way, great domain. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was not cheap or. Oh, actually, like... funny enough, it, it was. Yeah. Okay. It, I think it cost me like $10 when I bought it. Oh, now, wow. That, that, now that's they, really great. <laughs> now the value is like, I don't know, five ten thousand. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I can I can imagine. So yeah, uh, Vincenzo, thanks a lot for coming to the show, and we see each other probably soon on a conference. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a nice one. A pleasure.